So what I find is what most people do is they go through this process firstly. And if I draw it now sort of like a, a point points on a progression of time. So firstly, the soul sings, as we said. During that phase, if you like, and that phase may last a little while, for me it lasted about two weeks, I think. Um, but for many, it lasts much longer. Come in and there's some seats here down in front of you. Um, how many of you found the soul singing phase quite a long period? Right, so quite a number, that's quite good. How many of you found the soul singing was about, you know, the time you watched the DVD or something like that? And then after that you went into some emotions. How many of you found that happening? So quite a number of there. It all depends as to what's getting triggered inside of you as to what will happen. And also it all depends on many cases how long you're willing to hold on to emotions that are inside of you that you don't want to release that are in opposite to love. Because it, sometimes we can hold on to those emotions by suppressing them so much that we don't finish up that we don't finish up dealing with them, and we try to we try to stay in this soul singing phase for a long time in order to feel good. Because what do we like doing? We like feeling only good. We don't like feeling uh, painful emotions. We just like feeling pleasurable emotions. So that period it will will often last some time when a person first hears truth. Right. Then we kick into this other phase where some things start happening. One thing that starts happening is judgment. Now, how many of you have started the soul singing process, right? Started seeing the truth of what's going on, and then saw yourself in the mirror for the first time in your life and then started saying to yourself, wow, I've got some major, major problems inside of me. <laughs> uh, and then what you did straight after that is went into judgment of those major problems inside of you. How many of you have found that happening? Right, so the majority of us have found that happening. All right. Now, why does that happen? What, what, what's your idea of why that might happen? Far away. Because we're conditioned to blame somebody and it's easiest to blame ourselves. Yes, it's very true. You will either do one of two things when you get into judgment. One is to blame everyone else other than yourself. Or well, the second one is to blame yourself. Now, for most of us, when we were growing up, when we were tiny children, our, we finished up getting lots of blame from parents. So in the process of getting lots of blame from parents, we then learned to blame ourselves. And so we go straight away into this judgment of self. Now, judgment of self is one of your major problems that you will have in terms of your own resistance to dealing with emotion. Because let's, let's face it, for example, here, here's, here's something. Let's say during our childhood something happened with our relationships, with our family and our parents and so forth, that we finished up having a, a feeling inside of us that we like children sexually. Now, how many people would openly admit to that kind of an emotion? Very few, eh? Because what, there's huge problems with openly admitting that in today's society, isn't there? Okay. Now, if you have that emotion inside of you, what do you do with that? Well, most of the time we'll go into judgment about it. If we're not acting upon it already, we, we usually do the opposite. We go into judgment about it. So instead of actually dealing with the causal emotion, which is underneath the judgment, what we finish up doing is staying in judgment, which prevents us from the emotional, having the emotional experience. Can you see how that works? Let's say you also have a problem with anger. Let's say inside of yourself, you've always condemned people who are angry. So how many of us feel anger is a bad thing? Like, really? 
uh, I use Hebrew like quite a lot, so I'll put my hand up there. And then you've gone into the state of saying anybody who gets angry is a bad person. So you start going down that track. Now, when we when we get confronted in the soul singing period of our of this divine truth experience, if you like, what happens is we start coming to a full realization, a full picture of what we are. Then the next step is anything that's so called bad in our own eyes about what's inside of us, we will now judge. And in the process of judging it, what do we do? We shut down the underlying emotion. We don't experience the underlying emotion. We ignore it. Does that make sense? And this is happening for many of you. This is why many of you sort of skip out on the emotions. Because instead of allowing the emotion to be present without judgment, most of the time there's huge judgment about the emotion before you even get to experience the emotion. Now, I had this ma major problem for many, many years of my own processing. And it took a long time before I realised that I had to do, with judgement, you were actually doubling up your work load and you're actually creating your own resistance to your emotions with judgement. When I say doubling up your workload, you first have to work through the issue of why you're judging yourself and then after you've dealt with that, then you get to work through the issue of what you were judging in the first place. Which is doubling up all of your emotional processing. If you can release judgment from the whole process, when, then what will happen? You are only focusing on the emotion itself. 